of weeks ago to talk about him coming here, and like within two hours, there were 5,000 views of this Facebook Live. And I can tell you, it wasn't because of me, it was because of him. So thank you, Chris. You're welcome very much. All right, thanks everybody. So first of all, how many people here, is it your very first time ever hearing me speak? Anybody? Everybody, right? Has anybody here ever heard me speak before? To all two of you, right? So this will be, so bear with me a little bit. This will be a little bit fun. Um, I'll just kind of start this off by saying that it has not been an easy road of entrepreneurship for me whatsoever. You know, it may look like it just down the street from here. We have a 25,000 square foot facility, over 50 full-time employees, um, well over 150,000 active members in our community. This year we'll pass over a million members in our community. It's been such an exciting uh, growth spurt that we've experienced, but it wasn't like that at all. You know, I'm somebody who did not come from wealth. I came from very humble beginnings. And um, I know I'm so limited on time, I was asking Peter, what should I share? Which one of my stories should I share to be able to give you an insight? So how about this? Instead of me just sharing with you randomly, why don't I ask you and you could pick between one of these three stories, okay? The first one, do you wanna hear the story about how I got the name Sun Falcon as my actual name growing up? Okay, how I got the name Sun Falcon, so think, don't wanna hear the Sun Falcon story. Do you wanna hear the story about how I got myself in a situation with a negative bank account, a 485 credit score, rear-ended in a car, and quit being an entrepreneur? So do you wanna hear that hard knock story? Or do you wanna hear about the story of the time where I literally invested $20,000 of money into a program that was finally gonna solve all of my problems, everything that I had, only to never even use it, never even get any return on investment, and basically got bamboozled. Which story of mine do you want to hear? The Sun Falcon story, the hard, the hard knock story, or the time where I made the worst investment of my life? Hard knock. Hard knock. Hard knock. Investment story, hard knocks, or Sun Falcon? Hard knocks. Hard knocks? Hard knocks. Okay, let's see, let's, I think most of you. How many people in here want to hear the hard knock story? Raise your hand. Okay, about half. How many people here want to hear the Sun Falcon story? Okay, about a third. How many people here want to hear the bad investment I made? Okay, well, tell you what. Let's, let's go ahead and start with this. Let's start with this. I really, this name Sun Falcon is the most weird, unique thing of my life that I could ever imagine. Um, my parents were hippies, and when I say hippies, I'm talking like legitimate hippies. I was born in the mountains of Ashland, Oregon in a teepee with just my mom and my dad. No doctors, no hospital, no midwives, no nothing. Just my mom and my dad. And my dad is afraid of, uh, he like passes out if he sees blood, right? So that was the doctor. So basically my mom gave birth to me by herself. In the mountains, uh, in Ashland, Oregon, my dad was a sprout farmer. He basically just grew their own food. Very, very, very broke. And um, the name Sun Falcon comes from the morning that he brought me out of the teepee as I was born. It was 5 a.m. in the morning and baby falcons were born in the tree at the same time. And being a true hippie in hippie fashion, he named me Sun Falcon as my, my name. I did not get the name Chris or Christopher for another like three, couple of years or whatever it was. My name was legitimately, even my brothers still joke to this day, they call me Sun Falcon as a name. So the reason I want to tell you that weird story is, first of all, how many people here have you ever known somebody that was born in a teepee? Right? I came from humble beginnings. My parents got divorced and we grew up on welfare. My mom basically was on welfare, section eight, food stamps, and basically lived in like a ghetto neighborhood. This led to a series of bad things happening in my life. It led to a series of association where I started hanging out with really bad kids in my area. And these bad kids led to a bad life for me. So I ended up dropping out of school in the ninth grade. I've never been back to school since. Okay, so in the ninth grade, uh, that's as far as I made it through high school. I don't have a college degree. I'm not up here educated. And I can tell you, I may sound confident now, but that was not the case. I don't care how good somebody sounds, you know, after years and years of experience. But I'll tell you, I had just given up on any type of success whatsoever. I was a high school dropout. Family was broke. I didn't believe in myself. My friends that I was choosing to hang out with were getting locked up, were getting in trouble, several of them dying. This was a very bad time of my life when I was a teenager. 
But I didn't let that stop me. For whatever reason, I, th I thought to myself, there has to be a better way. There has to be some way that I can become successful and help out my mom. So my first big dream was wanting to help my mom become successful. Now, it's difficult, okay? Put yourself in my shoes for just a second. Completely broke. My allowance was, like my mom was giving me like $5 food stamps as an allowance from time to time, okay? I was like so good at the system that I learned how to go to this natural health food store and buy 30 cents worth of a bag of chips with a dollar food stamp so they would give me 70 cents in return in real money, right? So I learned the game, the system where I'm like, all right, you get a dollar, you get a dollar, you get a dollar, and then we can go and we can actually get like two or three dollars in cash and then we would go to McDonald's and get real food, okay? That was my idea of like success, was figuring out how to live and survive off of food stamps. And then one day I got this little restaurant job. Now even this restaurant job wouldn't hire me. Just getting a job. So I had to start off as a dishwasher. All the other dishwashers like didn't even speak English, right? Started off as a dishwasher, then a bus boy trying to work my way up. And at this restaurant, there was this guy, Franz. I don't know if this guy Franz will ever like find me or something. If I'm ever streaming, he'll, he'll find me. This guy Franz introduced me to a book called Rich Dad Poor Dad. Right, is, that, is everybody here read, read Rich Dad Poor Dad? Right, is everybody here? So I read that book, Rich Dad Poor Dad, and then I started reading books. I started reading these books like Think and Grow Rich. Started reading books like How to Win Friends and Influence People. And I, suddenly I started realizing like, wow, it doesn't matter if I had a bad upbringing. I could be successful. And at first I didn't know how. I just thought if I just think about it, I could be successful. That's what I got from the books. I'm like. So all I really need to do is just start up a business and get rich, right? There was no practical application, but I got motivated. So I have to admit, the first time I tried this, I got it way wrong, right? So instead of think and grow rich, the first time I read that book, got all motivated, I did it wrong, I actually did it, drink and grow rich, right? So what I did was I went out drinking with a bunch of friends, telling them how rich that I was going to be, and then they all laughed at me, and then I said, okay, well I don't need you guys in my life. And that's what I did the first time around, was basically got drunk, told my friends I was gonna be a success story, lost all my friends. And that's what brings me to the second book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. I actually did it like How to Lose Friends While Under the Influence. <laughs> and what happened was, I like basically had no idea what I was doing at all. I mean, literally no idea. So then I got this cool idea. Let me go to the junior college and try to see if I can go back to school and learn how to start a business. So I went to this junior college in Santa Cruz, California, called Cabrillo College, and I went in and I said, okay, do I need a high school, uh, do I need to graduate high school in order to go here? They said, yeah, you have to get some sort of a transcript. I said, great. And then this kid walks up to me and he goes, this is the best advice ever, he goes, hey, you don't even need one of those. You know, you can pretty much walk into any class you want and you can audit the class for a few weeks first to see if you want to take it. They don't even ask any questions. Now, yes, technically this was cheating, but, I went into the sales and marketing class and I stood in the back of the room and I'm not even a student at school and I got my little pencil, my little paper, and I'm like, all right, teach me how to be successful. I've read books, I, I've tried all this stuff, nothing's working. And in this class, this is the craziest experience in my life happened. The teacher was answering questions about business and marketing and, uh, and, and basically one of, the, uh, one of the students said, well, how important is it that I have a website? How important is it to have a website? And this, uh, the teacher said, well, you know what? I don't think it's a good use of business to invest in a website right now. It's still kind of not proven and I'm watching everybody invest all this money into it. I think you should stick with traditional marketing for your business instead. And I couldn't handle it. I'm sitting there going, you've gotta be kidding. Is this how outdated is college that they're telling you not to have a website for your business? So here I am, not even enrolled in the class, not enrolled, never graduated high school, in the back of the room that I basically snuck into a college class, and I just decided to get gutsy and raise my hand. I said, teacher, you've gotta be kidding. Everybody here needs a website. That's the, that's the worst advice I've ever heard. Now who am I to think that I can tell the teacher she's wrong about teaching and I've never even graduated, right? So here's what she says, to put me on the spot, because she doesn't even know who I am. She goes, okay, if you, think websites are such a good idea, why don't you come up to the front of the class and you explain to everybody why it's a good idea. And being that, you know, you confront me, I'm like, okay, it's on. So I went to the front of the class, this is my first time ever public speaking. I've never spoken public. I went to the front of the class and I proceeded to tell them how I thought the internet was a great idea. At the end of that class, three people came up to me and said, hey, I loved your talk. Can, will you design a website for me? And then suddenly, I found my business model. Just like that. 
Just like that. I don't even know how, the, the oddity of it all. How was I even in this class? How did I get in front of the class? How did I do a sales pitch for a business model I didn't even have? And I said, yeah. They go, well, how much is a website? I, I had to think of something. It's like Sharon said, $300 was the number I came up with. $300, I'll sell you a website. They're all like, done, right? So I made $1,000. Then I had to design a website. I didn't know how to design websites. So I didn't have a computer either, because I was broke. So this is what you call just taking massive, imperfect action. So I got $1,000, and I went to the library at the junior college and started designing websites at the library, teaching myself. There was no class. I didn't know of a class to teach it. And I didn't have time to go take some you know, 12-week class. I needed to design these websites. If I can make another $1,000 next week, I got to get it done. So I just figured out, I taught myself how to design these websites. They were happy, and I started selling these websites for $300 a piece. Craziest situation, because I didn't have a computer, and yet I was a website designer. Now, granted, when I say I'm broke, I was living in a 200 square foot studio. Okay, I don't know if you understand the, the, the space of a 200 square foot studio. It's a <coughs> granny unit in the back of the house. That's one of those rooms where you sleep and go to the bathroom and cook like all in the same room, okay? And I had a roommate. Because, you know, why not? You know, because you got a whole bunch of extra square footage. So we were so broke and that I was catching the bus, three buses to go to the junior college and then three buses to come back. So it was taking me over an hour to get to this junior college. And I was going business to business trying to sell them on why they should get websites. So imagine this broke kid. I was so broke that I didn't have any nice clothes at all. I mean, probably I still don't have nice clothes, but that's never changed. But I went to... Um, I went to the thrift center, okay? And I went to the Salvation Army and I literally bought a full deck three-piece suit for $30, like a hand-me-down. And then people would ask me, when people would go, hey, that's a nice suit, what kind of suit is that? I would say, oh, it's a Salvation Armani. And that was, the, you know, that was my confidence building name. So I wore this Salvation Armani. My dress shoes were so old that they would like flap in the beginning, you know, the, the front part of them. My shoes would do more talking than I would. And I would go business to business with my little briefcase with a hole in it that looked like it had a laptop, but it didn't. And I'll go business to business pitching them on these $300 websites just because I figured I could survive this way. Crazy, true story. This is all 100% true. Nothing fabricated here at all. It would be raining, and I'd be this guy out in a three-piece suit walking with his little briefcase. All my friends made fun of me, right? They all, they all made fun of me. I got all the jokes, right? That I was like, oh, like I'm a traveling salesman, I'm an Amway, or am I a Mormon, or all this kind of stuff. They would all make fun of me. All my friends were laughing, right? And mind you, these are the same, many of them, the same friends right now that I can go right downtown to my old town, and they're sitting there complaining about how there's no jobs and no one's hiring or anything, right? I just was willing to do whatever it took. But when you're that broke, it's extreme. There's no money. It was so bad. I don't know if anybody can relate to being just flat broke. Now, most of us are probably entrepreneurs, so you might have gone through this, right? This roller coaster of ups and downs. But I was so broke that I couldn't, I could only afford to catch the bus to the junior college and work all day and come back, and I didn't have any money for food or anything. So I, I developed a system which was survive on coffee all day long, because you could go get these coffee refills at the junior college, survive on coffee all day long, get home at the end of the day, and eat three or four packages of top ramen, about 30 or 40 cents <laughs> worth of meals, just shove them, I mean, just eat them, right? And that's all I would do for like, like nonstop. That's, that's the price I was willing to pay. And if I had any extra money, instead of buying food, I would go down and I would, I would use like, I would spend like $3 or $4 on a presentation, print it out at like, back then it was Kinko's Coffee Center, print it out so I could give it to clients. And I was saving up that one day I was gonna have a laptop. So I literally was putting together whatever it took to be able to make this happen. But I was so broke. It was like, imagine if you are financially dunked underwater. Okay, imagine if you're dunked underwater. That's how I felt financially, right? Was I felt like I could never get ahead. I never had any money. I was always behind. I was always stressed. I could never break out. And I needed that breakout. I needed to somehow be successful. I was reading these motivational books. Nothing was working. I was making just enough money to barely pay any bills, and I needed something to happen. And that's when I finally cracked the code. Now, I just was in the back of the room, and I heard the presentation on Google. That was, as, as relevant as it is, that's exactly where my life changed. Was, one day, basically, Google came out, and Google started becoming quite popular. 
Okay, this is in like the early 2000s. And all my clients came to me and said, Chris, can you get us listed in Google? Can you get us listed in Google? Now, imagine, I'm flat broke. I know nothing about getting sites listed in Google, but you guys already know my sales style, right? So I said, of course I can, you know? How, and they're like, how much is that gonna cost me? And I knew I gotta charge more money. This other model wasn't working, so I said, this will cost you $1,000. So I started charging $1,000 for each one of my clients for me to rank them well in Google. So what I did, back to the library, now I got five clients to pay $1,000, now I got $5,000, find them above water, I can breathe again. I go to the library and I start working on these websites, trying to rank them in Google. It took me about a month of trial and error, working about, I don't know, probably 10 hours a day, just everything I could to try to get them to rank in Google. And then boom, I got my first client to rank in Google. I remember um, this client was like a cat furniture, I, I, I think it was, if I can recall this correctly, it's been years. It's like a cat furniture store, and basically they had all this cat furniture, and cat toys, and cat houses, and all these cat related terms. And then I, I didn't know anything about how much traffic came from Google. All I knew is when you search cat houses, I wanted my client to be in the top 10 for the word cat houses, and cat toys, and cat furniture. But I had no idea how many people searched for that on a monthly basis. So I got this, this client listed and ranked, and then they called me up and they said, what on earth did you do? And I said, I, I said I, I'm pretty pumped. I got you ranked in there. They're like, no, you have no idea. Like, we can't handle the amount of business we're getting now. <laughs> we can't handle it. And I mean, all I would do, all I went to Google and I would just search like cat furniture and they were like the second site, right? I had no idea how many people were searching for cat furniture. It just didn't dawn on me. So then I went to my cookie company client. Here's a little local cookie company that sells their cookies. And I, saw, I said, okay, well, I'm gonna get you listed and ranked for each one of your brands of cookies, each one of your types of cookies. Chocolate peanut butter, chocolate chip, or whatever. Um, you know, something, something macadamia cookie, something, something cookie recipes, whatever all these cookie terms were. Mint chocolate chip cookies online. Buy mint chocolate chip cookies. And I got, and next thing you know, I got in the top 10 for all of those. And then they called me up and they said, hey, I just want to say great job. If you want, here's free cookies for life for you. They literally gave me free cookies for life. Then I had a clothing company, and this clothing company had suits and designer clothes and stuff like that that they ranked. So I said, give me a list of all the brands that you guys, that you sell clothes for. All the suit brands and the shoes brands and the shirt brands and the belt brands. And I just ranked in the top 10 for each one of those. And I'm telling you, it was like, part of it was being in the right place at the right time. Part of it was being early to this, but I focused so hard and I kid you not, I mean, all their brands. They, they, I remember they would have brands like Tommy Hilfiger, Tommy Bahama, Ralph Lauren. And if you typed in like Ralph Lauren polos, Tommy Bahama t-shirts, Tommy Hilfiger clothing, they were in the top 10. And they just said, and I only charged them $2,000 for this, because I didn't understand the value of what I had, and I didn't understand the value of myself. To me, $2,000 was enough for me to go back to my friends and say, ha ha, look at me now, you know, I'm balling, right? Because I had made two grand, and that's way more than they, that's like more than they made in a whole month, because mind you, we were broke. So that was as big as my mind could think, was that two grand was like, I don't even need another client for a couple months. That's how crazy I was, right? But this client for Christmas sent me this big package with these shoes, these, these suits, designer clothing and everything. And I called them up, I go, how much is this stuff? They're like, oh, that's a $10,000 package. You just sent me $10,000 worth of clothing? They're like, oh yeah, you made us over a million dollars. As soon as that happened, I, I think they thought it would motivate me to help them, and it did not. I said, whatever I'm doing, I'm making the money for the wrong people. I'm charging two grand and they're making a million. So that's when I had my first paradigm shift about business. And granted, I'm still in this little square foot studio. I'm still broke. No car. And no laptop. Okay? And I'm making clients a million dollars. And I'm accepting their money before I even knew what I was doing. I, I, I accepted $1,000 before I even knew how to rank a site in Google. I just figured I'll figure it out. If you're willing to pay me money, I don't care what it is, you know? You tell me you want something, I'll go figure it out, I'll make it happen. So, I had this paradigm shift and I thought, oh my God, you know what I could do? Why don't I start my own clothing business? And then I can make the million dollars. So then I researched it online, how to start your own clothing business. Where do you get these clothes from? And I realized, okay, that's way too hard to buy clothes and have inventory and how do I ship it? This whole world of e-commerce scared me. So I came up with a better idea. Why don't I just partner with like Amazon? I looked up Amazon and I could sell all of their products. 
So here's what I did. I built my first store. All it was, the first store I did, I did something I felt like I understood, which was a store called Surf, Skate, Snow. It was surfing gear, skateboarding gear, and snowboarding gear. Because like, whatever, I was a, that's a kid. I grew up as, as a sponsored skater for Santa Cruz Skateboards. Literally, just a little ghetto kid trying to figure out this world that didn't understand it. Surf, Skate, Snow was like my first business. I applied the same strategies I used for my clients, and I said, okay, let me see if I can get ranked in the top 10 for the word snowboard boots. And I did, for the word snowboard boots. Like literally, I was like number five for just the word snowboard boots. And then I said, okay, snowboard binding, snowboard gear, snowboard accessories, snowboard jackets, snowboard helmets. And then I said, let me try the brands. Buy Burton snowboards online, buy this and that. Then let me get all the skateboard decks and all the surfing gear and all this kind of stuff. The site blew up. I mean, we're talking, I had cracked the code, Google, I had figured out how to rank in Google, the site blew up, and I'm selling Amazon products. Amazon gives me a check for you know a couple thousand dollars or whatever it was in commissions. And I'm going, great, I'm making money for myself, but it's not a million. How do I make like bigger money? And then the random luck, when, when you're just, when you're, it's not even really luck, when you're taking massive action in your business, you're gonna come across some very interesting ways to make money, okay? And what happened was I came full circle back around to Google. Google had a program at the time called Google AdSense. Google AdSense, and what it was, here's how it worked. Google has these little ads, and you just add them to your site, and if somebody clicks on them, you get paid, okay? Essentially, you can have advertisers on your site, but I don't have to talk to any advertisers. I put ads on my site, Google handles the whole process, and they get paid, so I said, let me just see what happens. So one of my clients was saying, Chris, can you rank us even better in Google? I said, sure. $5,000, or I'll do it for you for free, just let me put these ads on the site, because I want to test and see how well these work. They said, for sure, free, throw the ads up, it's all yours. So I went to one of my clients, I did some uh, the updates they wanted, and I put the ads on there. One client, one set of ads, okay? Forgot about it, because I didn't even know how to track it, I was new. Google sent me a check for $3,000, just for putting the ads on that site, three grand. And it was like, well, what if I put them on all the sites? So then I made a deal with these clients, and I said, okay, well, I'll go and I'll update all your sites. Let me just put these ads on the bottom. Very simple thing, just those little ads on the bottom. They didn't mind. So then I put them on the bottom. Google sent me a check, 10 grand. And then I thought, okay, let me, let me read how these ads work. And it goes, oh, if you put the ad in this way, and you make it this color, and you make it this size, you can get higher conversions. Next month, $20,000. Now, here's this broke, young kid living in this 2,000, or sorry, 200 square foot studio, just hustling. I had a girlfriend at the time, and I was staying at her house all the time, so it was 300 square feet. So, you know, so I was always over at her house because I needed that extra space. And um, broke, broke, broke. And then I got this $20,000 check. It all just happened so fast. In three months, my life changed. Set, they went to like, whatever it was, thousands, and then 10,000, and 20,000 a month. And I kid you not, here's how crazy my, my mind thinks. I went to my best friend George, who was at work, he was, he was a milkman, woke up at four o'clock in the morning and delivered milk to businesses. I went to my best friend George, I said, George, come here. We like closed all the windows, closed the doors so nobody could hear us in his room, and I showed him. I said, look at this, look at that. He's like, that's not real. And I said, yeah, it is. I literally, when I got my check, first thing I did was cashed it and then pulled it out of the bank just in case they tried to take it back. <laughs> so like, I got it in cash, right? I got it in cash. Like, I'm not taking any chances, but I said, this is real. And he's like, well, it's illegal. And I'm like, well, look at the rules. It's not illegal. Like, it's legitimately, I'm ranked in Google. I get a lot of traffic and, all, and I just put these ads on. That's all I'm doing. There's nothing illegal. If you can rank in Google, you can rank in Google. And he says, can you teach me? I said, listen, our friends, all these people we associate with are all negative. I was reading books like Think and Grow Rich. I was reading books like, you know, um, the greatest salesman in the world, you know, people like Napoleon Hill and Ogmandino and, and Sharon Lecter, right? Back then. And I'm reading these people and I'm like, you know, we gotta get out of here. And I made the gut, another one of the gutsiest uh, decisions in my life. I said, where? I said, I'm moving out of town. He's like, where? I said, I don't even care. It's gotta be close enough I can come back and see my family, but far enough that like, we don't have to do it all the time. You know, like we're too far, oh, I'm too far away. It's like, well, how far is that? I got like three hours. We went on a map, we found a place that was three hours away and I moved there. Never been there before, don't know anybody there, nothing about it. I just chose a spot that was three hours away so I wouldn't have to go to anybody's events, go to anybody's parties. I wouldn't have to turn down anybody. So I could just put my head behind this computer because the more time I spent behind this computer, the more money I made. 
So he moved all the way out there to a city called, right outside of Sacramento, California, to a city I'd never been in, no friends, no anything, right? Got an apartment together, a tiny little apartment, and literally all day long started building sites. Killed it. Multiple six-figure income. My best friend George, who didn't even have a computer, didn't even understand any work computers, I taught him how to do it, and he was making five grand a month. More than he was making at his job. We were sitting there watching movies, having fun. Then what happened was it all fell apart. Google will make these updates, okay, where they'll shuffle the results in the search engines. And, you know, it's to keep it from people being able to game the system, you know, and be able to dominate all top spots. So every time they would do one of these, I had to relearn everything over again. No problem the first couple times. But one time they got me, they shuffled everything, and I couldn't figure out how to get the sites ranked again, but I wouldn't give up. I kept trying, 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 until I eventually just ran out of money. Didn't have any money, wasn't able to get anything ranked, and my nice multiple six-figure business came crashing down. It came crashing down so hard that we got evicted from the apartment. It came crashing down so hard that I ended up in a negative bank account. I took out a couple of credit card loans to try to help me survive, and I ended up with a 485 credit score, and I hit the worst rock bottom I've ever experienced as an entrepreneur. Here's this guy who had figured it all out, making killer money, and then lost it all. It got so bad that literally we couldn't even afford to like keep the electricity on. They were starting to shut stuff off in the, you know, they shut like, I don't know if anybody can they shut like the water off, they shut electricity off. The craziest thing happened. We were so broke that I literally told my friend George, that same friend, I said, I quit. This entrepreneurship thing is too hard. If I just had a stable job, I wouldn't have to go through this roller coaster, and I literally quit being an entrepreneur. The craziest thing you could ever imagine. Here, here's what it felt. Let me, let me, let me ask you guys. <coughs> let me, let me make sure we're engaged here. Let me take you off topic and show you how it's relevant. Okay. So interact with me. Shout out your answer right here. I got a question for you. How long do you think somebody can live without food? If you didn't have any food, how long do you think you'd live? Shout it out. Seven days. How long? A month. Ten days. Three weeks. What do you guys think? How long can someone live without food? No food. Can't eat food. 40 days. 40 days. Stored energy. What would you say? How many? Six months? No, if you have no stored energy. So I guess we have an alien body with all the stored energy. Let's call fat. Let's, let's say, let's say, uh, let's say, for the sake of it, since I'm not a doctor and I don't know a lot about stored energy, are we safe to say you can last weeks without food? Yes. You can go weeks without food. Fair enough, right? Okay, change the change topic. So the, you know the struggle not having food. You can last weeks. How long can you last without water? Three days. days? How many? Three. Shout out. Three? Four days? Okay, so for the sake of keeping it simple, let's just say days. You can last days without water. You can last weeks without food. How long can you last without oxygen? Minutes. Shoot it up. How long can you last? Minutes. minutes? How many minutes? Three tops. Two tops. So if you hold your breath for two minutes, you're just dead. Right? <laughs> okay, we'll just say minutes. So you can last weeks without food. You can last days without water. You can last minutes without oxygen. But of those three, which one do we think about the most? Food. Food. Which one do we think about the second most? Water. Water. The one that's the most important we don't think about. Now, why don't we think about oxygen? It's all around us. We don't think about it. Well, here's the thing. As soon as you take it away from somebody, it's all they think about. If I took you and I took your head and I dumped it under water, the only thing you'd be, would you be thinking about food? No. You'd be thinking about breathing, air, oxygen. So that's what happens when we get financially dunked underwater. I got dunked underwater financially, and all I could think about was money. It's the only thing. Money, 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 money. When you are broke, when you're struggling, it's, all, it's the thing that dominates you. How can, what, where, where can I get this money? How can I pay these bills? What can I do? All it was is money. But like oxygen, if you have plenty of money around you all the time, you don't even think about it. So all I had was I had this goal to make money like oxygen, to create enough what was all around me where I didn't have to think about it anymore because it dominated my thoughts. Everything about money dominated my thoughts. That experience completely changed everything for me. That experience being 485 credit score, negative bank account, getting evicted from the house, which we did get evicted from, okay? 
fighting with my girlfriend, because that's what you do when you also don't have money, it's just you fight all the time. And all this stuff was going on, and my friend George came to me and said, hey, I found another opportunity for us to make money doing sales. We start up a new sales business, but this time I said, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it right. I'm gonna do it right. And we were able to build, in one year, I went to that company as a brand new person, flat broke, couldn't even afford anything, to selling over a million dollars were the products for that company, making hundreds of thousands of dollars, made more money in the next 12 months than I had ever made in a year before in something completely new, and I had a completely new drive. And I embraced a brand new concept, a brand new concept, which was, I'm going to take and embrace this internet world, I'm gonna embrace it, but I'm gonna embrace it in a traditional sense. Like each one of you have whatever business you're in. I'm gonna embrace this internet world, I'm gonna take advantage of it, it's not going anywhere, it's gonna be hot. I'm gonna master this. And I went after it. Started mastering social media. Started with social media, started figuring it out. Started when a new network would come out, everybody else is all confused. Oh great, there's another one, there's this and that. I would jump on it. If, if a network would go out of business or something like that, some social network, people would be like, I told you Chris, it would go out of business. You just wasted all this time on it. I didn't care. I was so engulfed in saying, internet's the future. I'm gonna position my business in front of that and I'm gonna capitalize on it. And it's the smartest thing that I've done with my business was position myself in front of trends. If something new comes out, we're in front of it, right? So we're always, right now, that's what I did. I said, uh, instead of me just designing websites and trying to rank search engines and all my eggs in one basket, I decided to really diversify myself. And what I'll do is I'll take whatever, like five, 10 minutes, whatever time real quick, and I'll give you some of the areas that grew my business incredibly, okay? I went, I went like this with my business. Year one was in the six figures. <coughs> Okay, that was year one with these methods right here. Year two, seven figures business, over a million dollars a year. And then the next year, year three, eight figures, over $10 million per year. And now my goal with this is 100 million in a 12 month time frame. This is insane to me. Right, just 10x, 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 just keep 10xing it. But the crazy thing is, is that when you figure out how to do it, it's almost like it just becomes easier. It was harder to make my first 10,000. Hard was my first $10,000 in a month. That was hard. That took everything that I possibly could take. That was hard for me. Easy was my first 100,000 in a month. That was easy. The easiest money I ever made was $100,000 in a month. I remember it was so easy. I set a goal that I wanted to do $100,000 in a month, and then I overshot it and did $150,000 that month. In profit, I actually did $300,000 that month. It was like, I set a goal to do $100,000, did $300,000, with $150,000 in pure profit after expenses. That was so easy, that was the easiest money I ever made. But good luck telling me that when I was trying to make $10,000 a month. The hardest money I ever made, this took me five years to crack. And this took me like three months to crack, okay? The reason is, is because we get smarter, we get better, and we, we learn how to do things. In order to work, in order to make $10,000 a month, I had to work hard. I had to roll up my sleeves and I had to muscle out that money. In order to make 100,000, I couldn't muscle that out. I had to work smart. So I asked myself, what level of thinking do I need to get out to make $100,000 a month versus $10,000? It was a completely different level of thinking. Doing what I was doing wasn't gonna get me there. I wasn't gonna make $100,000 a month selling these clients' websites and search engine services. So what I thought over here is I gotta find a way to scale. I gotta find something simple that I can scale up very, very rapidly. So what really scaled my business, the number one thing that scaled my business was paid traffic. Okay? That was the number one thing that scaled my business more than anything. Paid traffic. If I, it's just a simple math equation. If I can spend a dollar and make two dollars, then I can spend 10 to make 20, then I can spend 100 to make 200, 1,000 to make 2,000, 100,000 to make 200,000, a million to make two million. Right now, Brian, I'm here with my, uh, with my friend Brian for a Facebook campaign, and he's like, well, how big do you want to scale? And Brian, I said, 100 grand a day, right? That's what I said, I said, get that campaign, so we can spend 100 grand a day. You, you go, well that's insane, right? But it's not, it's just money flipping. Now, in order to get there, I had to start little small ads, little $5 a day ads, because I was afraid of losing money. 
I was afraid my inexperience, I'll just burn money down this tube of paid Google ads and paid Facebook ads and paid YouTube ads, and I didn't have money to spare. But I looked at this and said, what level of thinking is required to get to $100,000 a month? Then a million a month. And then now my goal is 10 million a month in sales. And we've had big months, like 5 million or whatever. We haven't ever crossed 10 million in a month yet. And it's all about getting yourself out of the way, getting all of your thinking out of the way, which is why today I could have been a fact done presentation, but instead I did a story. Because out of everything I've learned is that there's so many details out there. I, I, I could go on YouTube right now and watch 100 hours of tutorial videos. I can go on Google and search any topic I want to learn about and the information's there. So we have no lack of information, none. I'm self-taught in almost everything I've done. There's no lack of information. There's only lack of belief in ourselves and courage to take action. That's all we lack. No matter, no matter what you think I could teach you, I could have done a whole entire presentation right now on Facebook retargeting ads and how to set it up and automate your whole entire business. I could have done another, another presentation on how to build a 100,000 person email list where every single day you just send an email to that list and it's just cash flow every single day. Strategies are endless, right? I built a 100,000 person email list that may be between 300 dollars to $500,000 a month in profit, okay? What a great strategy. Buy leads for $2 a piece, make $2 to $3 per month per lead. What a great strategy. It's just a tactic. But you know what we need? We need the principles. For me, it was how can I get out of my own way and how can I figure out how to flip money? Google, largest platform in the world, right? You can literally, they will allow you to buy the number one spot. So instead of me trying to rank the number one spot all the time, you know what I said? Why don't I just buy the number one spot? You know why we don't buy it? Because it's expensive. But expensive is, 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 is it really expensive? No. If you're profitable, it's essentially free. Now, first paradigm shift. Most of these companies, Google, Facebook, most of these advertising companies, it's free to let, to, to let you have some of that space. It doesn't cost them anything. It's not like they're loaning you money. They're letting you advertise in that space. So most of these companies will front you some money to advertise with. The best key I learned was how if, if Facebook, for example, is gonna front me money, if I can make money on their money, then I can scale big time. So guess how I made all this money? Off of Facebook's money, off of Google's money. It's the biggest paradigm shift. A lot of us go, well, I don't have money. Okay, watch this. Right now, I can log into my Facebook ads account. They start you off with like a $250 billing threshold, which means you're, you can spend $250 of their money, and then they're gonna bill you. And you gotta pay it off. Okay, it's $250 in free money. Once you've used it a few times, you can up it to $750. Once you use it a few more times, you can up it to $10,000, $25,000. Facebook will front you $25,000 of their money that you can use all you want, and then after you use it, you owe them. Why would they do that? Why would Facebook give you $25,000? Anybody know? I mean, why then? How can Facebook afford to give all of us $25,000? It doesn't cost them anything at all. You're scrolling through the newsfeed, friend, friend post, friend post, friend post, and then a sponsored post. It costs them nothing, they just insert it in there. Since it costs them nothing, they want to encourage you to advertise on their platform, so they'll give you money. When you prove that you've got a good billing history, when you pay off your bill on a little bit, they'll give you a lot of money. So there's the secret. All I had to do was learn. Face, you can open up a Facebook account, they'll give me a couple hundred dollars. All I gotta do is flip that $200 into profit and I'm good. I don't even need any money. This thing took off. This whole thing took off. Facebook advertising blew the whole thing up. I, I mean, when I say blew it up, I mean, I could show you example after example after, after example of just launch a campaign, $100,000 cash. Launch another campaign, $100,000 cash. No money out of pocket. That's when I realized we're on something big. What I did was I realized the old way of thinking is hard. Find ways that are smart. If there's one piece of advice I give anybody out here is that there's money all around us in abundance. People out there making millions and millions of dollars all over. There's no lack of money, there's no lack of knowledge, there's no lack of information. Think smart. Position yourself in front of a trend. Use tools, use leverage, use resources. Don't, you don't need to work as hard as you think you need to work. Right? I was working an hour a day. I got two kids. My oldest son is autistic. Okay? I have a four-year-old, a six-year-old. My six-year-old's autistic. A lot of energy in our and, and taking care of children. It's not been an easy path. Okay? You figure out a way. You've got to learn to work 
smart. So my advice for everybody here is this one thing right here. Oh, sorry, this is like through. That's my advice. Rules are everywhere. My advice, one piece of advice for this working smart, here's how to do it. And then I'm, and then I'm done because I know I got the five minute mark. Habit stacking. Okay? Everything I do falls into this, this whole process right here. Find, you want to find more ways to make money doing what you're already doing. Okay? Start with something simple. Find two to three ways. to be, or just even be more efficient. To be more efficient, or make more money, or whatever it is. Find two or three ways to be more efficient in the same time. It's called, it's called working smart, okay? In the same time. Now let me give you an example. How many of you here, here have a Facebook account? A regular Facebook account, right? Okay, you all have the ability to be able to live stream on your Facebook account, right? Two or three ways. So. Right here, one thing I'm doing is I'm speaking to the audience, but at the same time, we've got people with phones out, right? There's multiple things going on. Do you see that? There's phones while at the same time speaking. Now, when you can learn how to be able to do multiple things at the same time, you're able to collapse time, where time is no longer an obstacle at all, and you're able to literally be extremely efficient. An example, I grab my phone right here, and I can go on a, I go on a social network like Snapchat, Take a little video, Snapchat, press a button, it goes to Snapchat, download it, upload the same one to Facebook, upload the same one to Instagram. I got stories on all three of those, effortlessly. Now, do the same exact thing, take my day's stories, download them into one, I got a video. I can post a video to Instagram, I can post a video to YouTube, post a video on the blog, all effortless. What you have is you have one activity that you do, which is to take, let's say, like a picture or a video. And then what you're doing is you're basically putting this thing everywhere, like this. And then all of these places, you're putting it everywhere. Now you go, okay, well this takes me two minutes, one minute, two minutes, five minutes, two minutes, one minute, two minute, and you add up that time and you go, okay, there's like 10 minutes worth of activity. I'm not gonna spend 10 minutes doing that. Create a system and have somebody else do it. Boom, you just start thinking smart. What I started doing is I said, if I'm already gonna be do, doing something, why not find multiple ways to make more money doing it? Businesses, uh, movie theaters do it. When you go to a movie theater, how much is a ticket to get into a movie theater? But they don't make any money on tickets. Where do they make their money? Concessions, okay? It's a business within a business. They found multiple ways to make money. If they were in that business, if they were in the movie ticket business, they would be spinning their plates all day long trying to make money. In the concessions business, they could spend five cents for a cup of soda and sell it to you for five bucks. Massive margins, effortless. Selling tickets, hard. Advertising, you have to get stars, you have to get blockbuster commercials and TV and everything just to try to make money off a ticket. Concessions, effortless, easy. Working smart versus working hard. Then that's what I do. I find ways to be able to stack activities together, collapse them together. I call it invisible selling. Invisible selling. The concept works like this. You're being sold, you don't even know you're being sold. The whole time. Here's this for free, here's this for free, here's this for free, here's this for free. Give away stuff for free, you end up making way more money, okay? You find ways to be able to do it. So my advice to you is this, look at your business. What are you already doing? How can you add more things to the same time without even using any more time to make more money? Perfect example is adding social media to your business. Same amount of time, you're already gonna go to work today, why not invite the world with you? And then give them an offer. Hey, join my email list for free and I'll give you this for free. See what I'm saying? You start thinking smart. And that's how we're scaling right now to $100 million. So you can keep, you keep a watch on us. The, my current project, my current business focus is a company called Techademics. I was pleased to have Sharon over there. Um, Sharon's uh, family, and Phil actually, even works with us at Techademics. I'd encourage you guys to follow along our journey, see how we do. Um, we are a school for entrepreneurs. Our goal is to have a million students, a million members this year in 2017. So I wanted to come out, share some wild, off-the-cuff ideas with you, if anything, maybe just to inspire you to come up with something. So I don't know if you hated the talk, loved it, but it was at least my privilege to be able to come out here and share. So thanks, Sharon, for coming to the opportunity. Absolutely incredible. Yes.
I'd like some of his energy. I tell you, be the bees of us. Wait a minute, come up for her. Oh, you're not done. I'm not done with you yet. All right, so techademics, um, some of the classes that you share. Yeah, so we teach um, mostly online marketing right now, but we teach how to set up Facebook ads, how to set up YouTube ads, how to set up e-commerce for your business, how to rank in Google. I mean, all these things that I just talked about, it's all my knowledge. I basically have a bunch of friends in the industry. We went to some PhDs and said, can you formulate this so it's more teachable and organized step by step by step? We took the wild west of internet marketing and we structured it in a step by step process from PhDs and we teach it at Techademics. It's a pretty exciting experience. And then you also have an in-house program for entrepreneurs that you're just launching, right? We do, yeah. Techademics is T-E-C, Ademics. Uh, and we have we we created a new uh, kind of industry. We call it intrapreneurs instead of entrepreneurs. We call them intrapreneurs. What we do is there's a lot of people that want to be entrepreneurs, but if they just worked for a company first, they could learn how companies run. Then they go out and be more successful. It'd be like being an intern for Sharon Lecter for a year. The things that I would learn about book launches and success and running <laughs> events and running a business and how to be able to build from scratch to make millions. What I would learn in a year from Sharon is actually more priceless than what he had even learned on my own. So we decided to let people come work for us for a year at a time on salary and be entrepreneurs inside of our company. So they build all of our assets. We help them build stores, we help them build advertising campaigns, everything for us on our dollar, and we teach them how to be entrepreneurs themselves. It's been a pretty exciting, that's a pretty exciting program too. Pretty advanced. You said it ahead of the trends, creating new opportunities, and, and being creative, what we heard from the Google guys, creative, looking at those gaps and creating a new market. So thank you, Chris. You're wonderful. You're welcome. Thank you. So we're going to be breaking for lunch in just a few minutes, but I just want to round up a couple of things. There's, Philip is here, and he's here to share with you what Tech Academics does. If you're interested in that, please go talk to them because um, he can share the programs that they have and all that information.